In this video, I'll be showing how I made this dressing table for my fiance. Let's get to it. I've started by modeling the piece in SketchUp and then creating a cut list and then cut the pieces to size on the table saw. Some of the large cuts were done at the retailer where I bought the plywood which also made it easier to transport. I started with the drawers. This was a mistake and will become clear by about halfway through this video. I also cut some small pieces and long strips which will later function as stops and slides for the drawers. Instead of using draw pulls, I opted for 32mm holes drilled into the faces of the drawers. This avoids any protrusions and means that when you sit at the table you won't have a handle jabbing at you in the stomach. I drilled the hole from both sides to avoid chip out. I used a follow around over bit and a router to round over the internal edges of the hole on both sides so that the drawer is comfortable to pull open. The drawer assembly consists of simple glued butt joints. These could be reinforced with screws or dowels, but I didn't bother and it held up just fine over the last year with the drawers well loaded. At the time I didn't have any clamps large enough to clamp something of this size, so I used band clamps which worked fine. The drawer bottom is 3mm ply and I decided to glue and nail it straight on. I drilled a couple of the nail holes initially just to make sure it was well aligned. I glued a couple of the small pieces I cut earlier just behind the drawer front to add some reinforcement and connect the front to the bottom. This piece also prevents the bottom from sagging at the front of the drawer. I only have two band clamps so I had to make the drawers one after the other. The second one was quicker as the steps were the same and I better knew what I was doing by this point rather than figuring things out. I wanted the front edges of the table to be a visible sort of wrap of plywood edge and so decided to mitre all four corners. I've done this type of thing before and on previous projects which I've also made videos of on my channel, however this time it didn't go well. I was certain that the saw blade was set to 45 degrees, however something clearly went wrong somewhere and I didn't even check that the angle was cut correctly afterwards, so I only came to notice this issue during the glue up which was frustrating. I didn't want to disassemble the glue up and recut the mitres as there wasn't enough wood to cut down without then ending up with drawers which would be too large. In hindsight I should have made the drawers fit the table, not the other way around.
I decided to compromise on the aesthetic and bought some pine decorative angle edge moulding for the corners. I cut four pieces, one for each of the corners on the table. I cut them slightly oversized so that they could be trimmed to their final size in situ. After unclamping the top, I glued the moulding in place and reclamped. This is fairly thin moulding but seems to have provided plenty of strength. I then used my Japanese pull saw to flush trim the moulding before unclamping the whole thing. I added a long thin strip across the underside of the top at the back of the body with pocket holes. This effectively prevents the top from bowing. Unfortunately, I lost some of the footage where I installed this. I then sanded the whole thing, starting with 120 grit through to 240, and finished it with a water-based polyurethane varnish, sanding between coats. I gave the top five coats, as it needs to be able to take plenty of wear, as well as potential makeup spills, etc. I wanted quite a light appearance to this piece so I bought 16mm square hollow section steel and in hindsight it would have been better to have gotten either a thicker gauge of steel or thicker sections, maybe 20mm. In the end it was okay but a little wobbly. We have since moved house and I chose to secure the piece to the wall in the new place so it's rock solid now. I started by cutting the steel to length. I then ground down the edges and added a light chamfer to reveal fresh clean steel. I did the welding for this project over two separate sessions. So the first session I was using the TIG welder. When I went back for the second session, the TIG welder was out of action in the workshop so I wanted to complete the project, so I went back to the MIG welding. In a project riddled with mistakes, the legs were no exception. I should have drilled all the mounting holes in the steel before welding. I only remember to do this part way through, so some of the drilling was very awkward. Here I'm drilling some of the pieces that I hadn't yet welded. In the end, I think the welds came out okay and they're certainly plenty strong. If anything gives, it will be the steel itself as it's so thin to begin with. If I was to do this again, I would definitely use 20mm square hollow sections instead. I screwed the legs to the body. The nuts and bolts I intended to use to connect the legs with each other hadn't arrived yet so I used zip ties as a temporary measure. These parts could have been welded together. I wanted to retain the ability to take them apart if I ever wanted to move the piece or put it into storage. Then it was just a case of putting the dressing table in its spot 